Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more Overly Sarcastic Productions, and this time we are returning to Fables and Folk Tales, this time Yurashima Taro, going back to Japan. Um, before we dive in, um, I have, we, looks like we are caught up on the Trope Talks as of recording this, that means only be watching Trope Talks now whenever Red uploads a new one. Um, didn't think I would get there, uh... This soon. I don't know. I, I, for some reason, I was thinking that maybe she had more. Uh, but I don't think uh, Trope Talks are that old of a series for Overly Sar OSP. So, uh, yeah. Um, but we'll probably also be going back to Blue and watching more of his history stuff that I have not yet watched uh, and their other uh, content and whatnot. But anyways, that said... Um, hold on, I'm gonna- Allergies are fucking me up, I had to wipe my nose, I felt, I felt it leaking, dripping, snort. Anyways, you didn't need to know that detail. Let's go ahead and dive in. Magical adventures in fantasy other worlds may sound fun on paper, but more often than not, they're a surprisingly risky gamble. In the best case scenario, you'll come back home and find only seconds have passed since you left, and you won't even get in trouble for being gone. Sometimes time passes at a one-to-one -one rate, and the whole time you're gallivanting around in the magical other world, time's still passing back in the real one, and you're gonna have some serious explaining to do if and when you get back. But the worst case scenario flips that first one on its head. You might think you only spent a few days in the other world, but hundreds of years could be passing in reality. The concept of localized time dilation is a staple in fiction and folklore because it's frankly deeply unnerving. As a bonus yeah. fun fact, it's a real thing in relativity. It's almost totally unobservable under normal circumstances since we tend to stay in mostly one place relative to the Earth and don't usually move at an appreciable fraction of the speed of light, but a clock moving relative to an observer can be observed to tick slower. Oh god, we're getting in- oh no, I'm not gonna understand this. Basically, the closer the red clock's velocity is to the speed of light, the less time it will measure from blue's perspective, but it won't be noticeable until the- Pretty close to this. Uh, uh, I don't understand science. Slower than a relatively stationary one, and a clock close to a gravitating mass will measure less time passing than a clock farther away from the same mass. Thanks to gravitic time dilation, the core of the Earth is about two and a half years. Basically, the closer the clock is to the gravitating object, the less time it will measure. With the effect being stronger and more observable at close proximity and to more massive attract. I don't. <laughs> uh. This is why I didn't become a scientist, because this kind of theoretical stuff, this, this, this jargon does not make sense to my brain. My brain can't wrap my head around it. Younger than the crust. This is bananas. You may remember it from Interstellar. That's basically the only time pop culture ever used it. Yeah. I can uh, yeah. Interstellar did it. I remember that was the only one I know. Maybe those magical other worlds simply reside close to the event horizon, slowed and distorted by the very nature of space-time. Or maybe it's fiction and we don't need to read too far into it. Anyway, today hmm. let's talk about a Japanese folktale about the dangers of magical other worlds and the importance of following instructions from people who know more than you. Our story begins with a young fisherman called Urashima, who's a very sweet guy without a mean bone in his body. His profession of fisherman does make it a little difficult for him to be completely harmless, but he's very conscientious about the whole thing and doesn't do any more harm than he has to. So that's why one day when he fishes up a massive turtle, he remembers hearing that turtles are supposed to live for a thousand years and he feels bad about cutting that short just for a tasty dinner, so he throws the turtle back and settles in for a nice little fishing boat nap. This is when a beautiful woman rises oh. out of the water, steps into the boat, and tells Urashima that she was that turtle and is also the daughter of the sea god, and she's here because he just proved himself in a secret test of character and is qualified to be her husband. Ooh! Dude. Is that just what you gotta do? You, do, I, do I just gotta go fishing, catch a turtle, and let the turtle go? I'll do it. Is that what it takes? I'll do it. No hesitation. I'm, I'm running. I'm running to the, the river. Urashima likes the sound. Are there even... I'm, I'm trying to think... I've never seen a turtle at my nearby river. River that my town is. Huh. I don't think we got turtles. Damn it, I gotta go somewhere farther away. Done to that, and he and the princess sail out to the Dragon Palace to be married, where they settle in to live together in riches and luxury for a thousand years. I love how Hiroshima is just like, yeah, sure, all right, let's get married. <laughs> He just goes with it. Full years, and if only the story ended there. But while Urashima is a big fan of this magical palace and dragon princess wife situation, after about three years of divine marital bliss, he starts feeling a little bit homesick, and he wants to sail back to his humble village to check in on his family and friends, you know? The dragon princess doesn't think this is a very good idea, but she won't stop him, so she just warns him to be very careful, because she has a feeling something very bad might happen if he does anything reckless. She gives him a small box and warns him- Just please be careful and keep this closed. I'm always careful. Ran off with a fish lady he just met that- Yeah! Okay, I'm glad Red is acknowledging 
that <laughs> that bit there. And I think I already know what's gonna happen. He's gonna open the fucking thing. ...him not to open it under any circumstances or he won't be able to come back. So Odashima tucks the box away, grabs his boat, and sails back home. But it's not quite what he was expecting to see. The mountains and rivers are all the same, but the buildings are gone, including his house. He flags down a couple passing beachgoers and asks them what happened to the Odashima house, and they tell him that's a weird thing to ask, since it's an old folktale around these parts. 400 years ago, some kid named Odashima drowned on a fishing trip and never came home. His family are, of course, long dead, and even the village he lived in has fallen into ruin. Odashima realizes the Dragon Palace might just be one of those magical fairy realms he's heard about, where time passes a lot slower on the inside than the outside. He thought it was only three years, but it's been centuries out here. Well, that's a bummer, but what are you gonna do, right? With no <laughs> surviving friends or family and no reason to stick around, Udashima prepares to head back. Oh, he is. Okay, Yurashima. Only to realize he doesn't remember the way. Surprise, surprise, the ocean doesn't have too many identifiable landmarks. Uh -oh. Udashima freaks out and panics for a bit before remembering the box and thinking maybe there will be something inside he can use. Surprise, surprise. Oh no, he was just a, he was just supposed to sail back out and then he would have been brought back. But oh, oh, this is sad. Guys, there isn't. When he cracks the box, the only thing inside is a vaguely ominous cloud of vapor and the recollection that that was the one thing he was supposed to not do. Whoops. Whatever magic was in the box dissipates and Udashima gets hit with 400 years of backlog time all at once, rapidly aging all the way up into a corpse. Total bummer. Moral of the story? Well, it's What about his wife? What about fish wife? Turtle wife? Aside from the standard, don't disobey magical orders from fairy tale ladies, maybe, you know, make sure you and your fiancé are fully on the same page before moving in together. Yeah, but she's a goddess, and goddesses play by different rules. They're kind of scummy in that way. But like, you can't blame them, because that's just the life that they've lived. They don't know anything. They don't know better. And they're hot, so, like, you know, they get a pass, because they're hot. They're, you know you might handle your chores differently or have different standards of organization. That's just the kind of stuff you should really talk out first. And also, your fiancé's house might be a relativistic anomaly that completely cuts you off from your friends and loved ones forever, which is just generally a red flag. Yeah. Maybe this Literally meaning, Yurashima effect is another term for time dilation. Time so while he may have thoroughly beefed it, at least he got a cool thing named I'll after him. Folks, if leaving your partner's house is this bad for you, the relationship might not be all that healthy. Listen, Red. I'm attracted to the unhealthy, okay? Maybe. I'm gonna leave that there. <laughs> uh, Alright, that was Fables and Folktales, Yurashima Taro. Uh, really wasn't, uh, much to it. I thought maybe, uh, there was going to be a little bit more to it, but there really, uh, wasn't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a, that was pretty sad. <laughs> that was pretty sad. Uh, kind of sucky. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, one of those kind of miscommunication trouble. Like, why wouldn't she tell him? Like, that that's one thing that that's something that bothers me. Stories is the whole uh, just not not telling people because I wouldn't call this miscommunication, but it's when you just don't tell someone the full thing. This could be miscommunication, or also the there's a book I'm currently reading which is doing this right now, where one person is just refusing to like listen, and also one person is just not really trying that hard to say what they're thinking and it just bothers me i don't like that like like i don't i don't i don't give me one or the other don't give me both you know right like i i i could i could be okay with a, a character not really wanting to tell someone something in it in, in its entirety as long as that person isn't like a blockhead, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to word it, but anyway, th yeah. This this story kind of made me think of the book that I'm currently reading, and I'm just not vibing with. Um, but anyways, this was Yurishima Taro. Uh, I've got nothing else to add here at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next video.